By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to enjoy an X points match. We have Casey who's playing a mono white deck that's called Fast, Faster, Fastest. And he is taking on my um, Elementals Vault deck. It's red, it's blue, it's full of Elementals, full of mana vaults. Now before I jump into the deck tech, like I mentioned, uh, this is an X points match, meaning that uh, you can only spend 10 points on allocated cards. So here you can see an overview on the cards that have points on them. So it's always kind of a puzzle. You don't want to get or you're not allowed to go above 10. And then there's the rule set that we're playing. That's the Atlantic rules. That's the rule set under the X points. And that means that Fallen Empires is allowed here. You can also play with four workshops, but only with one strip. Now, if you want to know more about X points, about the rule sets, all that stuff, please check out the description below for all the information. And in that description below, you can also find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. And if you click on there, you're going to go straight to the games. So you skip the deck tech section. I know some people enjoy watching the game first and then check out the deck techs later or just leave the deck, deck techs as a whole. So that's, of course, all up to you as a viewer right here on Timmy Talks. And I guess I'm now going to start with the deck techs. And you know what? I'm just going to start with my own deck. Why not? Let's take a look at my Elementals Vault. And here we see my deck Elementals Vault. Now this deck has been on the channel a few times with, um, you know, sometimes it's successful. Usually it, it, it doesn't win, but it usually gets a game win in uh, during a match. Who knows, maybe it can win today. But it's just one of these of the decks that I just love to play. I love the way it looks. I love the fact that it's made up fully out of reprints. You know, it's revised Chronicles 4th edition. That's the era of when I was most active in Magic and when I started playing Magic, you know, uh, Revised just kind of stopped. 4th edition was new with those shiny packs with like the art on it. People loved those. And I remember Chronicles coming out. Nobody loved those, but it was great that they came out because I had access to these new cards. So, I mean, this, this really kind of takes me back to the creatures that I wanted to play with. And also the, the red and the blue color combination was something that I always enjoyed. And elementals to me, they were kind of cheap. They were easy to get, but they were cool. You know, it's a big body. You control the elements. I kind of love that. And I still think that, yes, usually there are better options, but like an air elemental, a 4-4 flyer in five in blue, it, it's quite good. And also the earth elemental, the five toughness, it's really good. You know, you cannot play a side blast on it. Uh, it's hard to get rid of with burn, so it's it's a difficult creature to deal with, really. I mean, of course, you can't bolt it either, you know, or you need to to put two bolts on it. So it's it's pretty good. Now, um, the name of this deck comes from the mana vaults, and the idea is that my elementals are in a vault. So if you look at the deck picture, you kind of see that rectangular shape in the middle. That's kind of the vault where the elementals are trapped in, and then you need the mana, you need the magic to release them. So when you turn your mana vault sideways, so you tap them, you're releasing your elemental army, right? So that's kind of the story uh, behind the deck. So what I want to do basically is just turn one mana vault, turn two, uh, you know, cast an elemental. That's what I want to do. Now, when I'm playing against decks like today, because today I'm playing against white, uh, you know, I'm a little bit more conservative with that strategy because if I go turn two elemental and my opponent has a swords, then my creature's gone and I have a tap mana vault that's going to slowly kill me. So I don't want that to happen, obviously. So I'm expecting myself to play a little bit more modest, you know, to just play a little bit more slowly and preferably only play out that, you know, tap that, ele uh, that time vault with the mana to cast um, an elemental when I have... For example, a counterspell as a backup or, you know, maybe when my opponent has already kind of played out a lot of swords, then I can take more risk. Um, now, there is a little bit nice, I think at least nice, neat little strategy to get rid of uh, the mana vaults, and that is with energy flux. So I'm playing with two energy flux main, and the idea is that I then don't pay the upkeep cost for my mana vault, so my mana vaults die. So that's a way of kind of getting rid of my mana vaults after I've used them to kind of play my elementals. Now, if they stick, also fine. I can maybe untap them later and just use them to cast a Yuji Disintegrate or Fireball. I think in this matchup, because I'm playing against uh, White Weenie, I, I, I think it's, it's looking kind of okayish for me because I have access to four Lightning Bolts. I have access to one Earthquake main. I have the, uh, the Fireball, which I can use to like, take up multiple creatures and if I can kind of drag the, the game into the mid game, I can start casting my big elemental. So that's going to be really annoying for my opponent. Obviously, after sideboarding, I will probably board out 
My Blood Moons, I'm not sure if I'll keep the Energy Fluxes. Kind of depends on how many artifacts my opponent plays. Which is kind of hard to tell, of course. Because remember, we don't know each other's decks when we start playing. Uh, but I'm sure when I see that, hey, he's playing Mono White, I'm going to board out those, uh, those Blood Moons. Anyway, this is my deck. Now let's take a look at the deck of my opponent. And here we see the Mono White list of Casey. And it's really nice to see, or interesting to see, maybe I should say, um, to see how White Weenie is evolving, right? It's no longer this list with four Crusades, only white creatures. No, it's completely changed. I mean, look at this list. We see two Pendlehavens there. And Pendlehaven, of course, a super good card, but that's kind of a relatively new development in the white weenie strategy. So Pendlehaven, a card from Legends, you can tap it for a green mana, but you can also tap it to give target one, one creature plus one, plus two. Now this, of course, is super good. Your Thunder Wolves, your uh, Ecation Infantry, uh, your Ecation Javelineers, those are all creatures you can target with the Pendlehaven. I mean, those are 12 targets, and it makes your 1-1 one, one creature into a 2-3. That's a huge advantage, and it's a huge difference as well. So this deck wants to play creatures, turn them sideways, and attack, 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 attack. And what I find really cool to see here is that Casey went for the first strike strategy. I mean, look at the list. You've got Order of Lightbearer, White Knight, Ecation, uh, Infantry, and you've got Tundra Wolves, all creatures that can have first strike or have first strike as a static ability. So it's just really good. Combine that first strike with Aopile. I mean, that makes it that makes Aopile a really good card. And I'll explain why. Let's say I've got a fire elemental and Casey is attacking with the White Knight. Yes, I can block the White Knight. I've got a 5-4, right? But before damage, uh, when blockers are declared, but before damage is dealt, Casey can use the AO pile, deal two damage to my fire elemental. Then the fire elemental takes two damage, first strike damage from the white knight. So before my fire elemental can deal any damage to the knight, it's already dead. So AO pile with first strike is fantastic. And also there's another card in there that I would like to highlight that works so well with first strike. And that is of course, Army of Allah. So Army of Allah gives all his creatures plus two plus O. Oh. Again, works super good with first strike. First strike damage comes in first, the creature dies before the creature can, you know, deal damage back. It's fantastic. You know, I, I think it's a really, really good strategy. Um, this deck is looking really good. There are the two hurricanes are also really useful in this deck. Again, that's that little green splash. Hurricane can be such a great finisher. You know, that's usually the problem when you play mono white is, you know, you don't have Bolt, you don't have Psionic Blast, uh, you just, you don't have Hurricane, you know, you don't have a way to finish the game. But because your AO piles and your two Hurricanes, all of a sudden you have direct damage in your basically mono white base deck, right? So it's really worth splashing green for those Hurricanes, in my opinion. I also like the fact that he's only playing with two swords, because first of all, your opponent is probably expecting four swords. So I'm definitely going to play against this deck within the back of my mind thinking he's got four swords. It's dangerous. Another reason why I like it is that swords to plowshares is a little bit counterproductive in white weenie because you're giving your opponent life. You don't want to do that. With these type of decks, you want quick, fast games, fast, faster, fastest. Remember, it's the name of the, of the deck. And you want to have fast games and you want to kill your opponent, boom, you know, within a couple of minutes. You don't want these long dragging on games and Swords of Plows here doesn't help with that part of the strategy. So I understand why he's only playing with two. It, it, it's also, it kind of reminds me of when I'm playing with blue and I don't play with counter spells. That's always funny because my opponent assumes that I'm playing with counter spells. And usually I do, but sometimes I don't. Keep two blue open and he's going to play around it. I think that's what I'm probably going to do here against Casey with the swords. I'm going to think, oh, he's got four swords. I got to play around the swords. And in reality, now that I see the list, he, he only had two. So yeah, that is uh, well played, well played. Anyway, uh, this is the deck of Casey. We've seen my deck. If I think of the odds, I mean, I've got some really good cards against Casey, like Earthquake, Lightning Bolt. Um, but again, Casey's deck is looking so, it's looking like a machine. It's looking really, really good. So I'm going to give Casey the benefit here of the doubt. I, I would say kind of 60-40. Let me know in the comments who you think the favorite is and why. Is it my Elementals deck or is it Casey's uh, fast, faster, fastest, mono, white, slash, kind of greenish deck? Let me know in the comments below. And then now we are ready. Let's go! To the match. Game number one, here we go. So I'm sitting on the left with my blue and red elementals deck, starting here with the Mana Vault turn one. That's what I want to do. Five cards in hand, passing the turn to Casey, who's playing with his 
dominantly white deck, but there's also some green in there, and it's a, it's a white weenie strategy. So it's going to go really fast there. We see a Savannah Lines by Casey. So both of our decks are doing what they're supposed to do. And now the big question is, am I going to take the risk? Am I going to cast an Elemental here? Looks like I'm a little bit in doubt. So I've played at City of Brass. I could play a Water Elemental here or an Air Elemental. Or, of course, just keep mana open to counter. Taking the risk, casting an Air Elemental here. This is a big risk because if Casey has a Swords... I am toast. You know, he can sort me, can attack with the lines. I'm going to take damage from the vault. I mean, this is a big risk I'm taking. And remember, I mean, I now know after looking at Casey's list, he's only playing with two sorts. But when I was playing against him, I didn't know that. So I'm, I'm really taking a risk here. Anyway, there we see, oh, a mace by Casey. That is really good. That's going to stop my air elemental, basically changing my air elemental into a wall. Um, and also a second line here by Casey. And I'm still taking damage from my own Mana Vault. And look at that, missing a land drop. Oh, this is bad news. I don't want to miss land drops. I mean, Casey's deck is already going really fast. I'm expecting him to play just more creatures here. Or is he passing? It looked like the passing gesture. Is he or... It looks like he... No, it looks like he's not. Going through his hand... Is that a land? Yeah, playing a land here. Another planes. I'm expecting more creatures here from KC. Okay, there's an AO pile. That is quite good because he can then attack with the lion. Do I have a counter spell here? There's a counter spell on the AO pile. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Because by combining AO pile with the damage from a lion, he could kill my, my air elemental if I block with it. So I think this is a really good decision to counter the AO pile, taking a damage from the vault, dropping to 15. Again, missing my land drop. Man, this is frustrating. I mean, this air elemental is doing what it's supposed to do because it's preventing Casey from attacking. But if I then cannot find my lands, I cannot, like, work on my board. Oh, no, strip mine, stripping the city. Oh, this is so bad. I mean, oh, there's an Ecation Javelin here. Very cool uh, Lego spear on there, by the way. A Javelin, I guess I should say in this context. And a Tundra Wolves 1-1 First Striker from Legends. Oh, this is so bad. <sighs> Taking more damage from the Vault. And I mean, at a certain point, Casey's going to attack as well with his army. Remember, with the Maze, he can just take out the creature that's being blocked. I mean, I'm on 14. I'm going to drop to 13. Again, no land drop. There's a Savannah and a pass. No, he's going to tap the Savannah. More creatures, another Ecation Javelinier. This is a problem because with those two Ecation Javelinier's, I mean, that's going to hurt for me. It looks like he's going to attack here. Attacking with his creatures. Remember, he can use the mace now to take the creature out that I'm actually blocking. So he's not even going to lose a creature. So blocking the Savannah Lines, taking four points of damage. Look at my life total, nine Oh, only, okay, so I guess I'm still on 10, that's something. It's really hard to see Casey's life total, by the way, but it's not really relevant. He's still on 20. I haven't dealt any points of damage. Going to drop to 9 here because of my own mana vault. I'm finally finding a land, though. I mean, an Earthquake for 1? Do I have an Earthquake for 1 here? I am playing with 1 Earthquake. Earthquake for 1 would be really sweet. That would save me getting... Okay, Fireball. Fireball is not going to save me. Ugh... So killing here the Javelin here, just purely because if I don't do that, then maybe if I block, for example, the Savannah Alliance next turn, he can use his two Ecation Javelin here counters to kill my Air Elemental. But yeah. This is um this is pretty bad for me. It's looking it's looking really bad. There is a white knight, so even more creatures. I'm expecting, yeah, exactly. I'm expecting him to attack again. I'm on five here. I mean, it can block a Savannah, take four points, drop to... Well, I'm on nine, okay, so I'm not on five. That dice was on my deck. Okay, so now I'm on five. Going to drop to four. Oh, I think I should drop to four. Maybe I'm... Anyway, it's not really relevant. Going to die anyway. So this is game uh, number one in the books for KC. I mean, well played, Casey, but yeah, for me, this is kind of frustrating to look back at because I'm just not finding any lands. And I mean, I don't mind losing, but 
you know, losing because you can't find Lance never feels good. Anyway, uh, it is a nice demonstration, though, on what Casey's deck can do. We're now going to dive into our sideboards, and we're going to catch uh, back up with you in game number two. Game number two, here we go. There is a City of Brass that reminds me of game one. Do I also have a Mana Vault? I don't. Passing the turn, that's a Savannah Alliance. Would be nice to just bolt the lion. I am finding a mountain here in the pass. So that means I don't have access to counter magic here. Tapping two, there's a white knight, probably an attack for two here. Gonna drop to 18. And then there's a bolt on end step on the white knight. Gonna untap. So those bolts, of course, are great in this matchup, but it is a one for one trade though. Okay, there's another island. It's looking good. I was kind of worried to maybe, you know, not finding the right lands. So I've got an island now. At least I can counter. I probably boarded in my, uh, my other earthquake. There's an AO pile. There's an attack. Dropping to 16. No counter spell on the AO pile. There's a volcanic island. Tapping two or not untapping again. I wonder, maybe I'm thinking about it like a Disintegrator Fireball for one on the uh, Lion, but I mean, is that really what you want to do? Then again, remember, Casey's an aggressive player. Don't really want to take the damage, just passing the turn here, not finding a Mana Vault to kind of accelerate. Casey tapping two. There's another AO Pulse. That's already four extra damage on the board. I mean... That adds up, you know, dropping to 14 here. Again, an attack. Now I've got five mana, hopefully, at least. Yep, that's mana number five. Let's cast some elementals. 13, and what am I going to cast? There's a fire elemental, so five, four. And hopefully, I'm just hoping my hand's full of elementals, and I can now, from this point forward, just cast elementals every single turn. I wonder if Casey's going to use double AO pile to get rid of the fire elemental. It looks like he is, so he's going to kill it on the spot. I'm actually fine with that, because it's a two-for-one trade, and he's not using the four points of damage on my face. I also understand it from Casey's perspective, because he wants to keep attacking, he wants to keep dealing damage, and he can do that now that the Fire Elemental is out of the way. So I'm going to drop to 11, and here I feel I'm kind of lucky, right? Because Casey is not playing any more creatures, not putting any more pressure on the board. Hopefully I can play another Elemental. There's an Air Elemental. Okay, so this is quite good. Passing the turn here. You can also see the thumbs up there from Casey. Because, of course, I wanted to start with the Fire Elemental, kind of lure out the double AO pile, and then play out the Air Elemental. But now Casey's going to cast something. Does he have Sarah Angels in his board? Did he board those in from the side? Oh, Hurricane! Oh, this is so good for Casey and so bad for me because it's N4 points of damage on me, and I'm losing my Flyer. This is horrible. I'm on five. Oh, man. This is really bad. Am I just going to lose? Earthquake for one. Going to drop to four. Oh, this is so bad. I'm on four. There's a pass, though, by Casey. I mean, he's giving me some time. Oh, I'm passing the turn. Two cards in hand. Casey tapping a white. Ecation Infantry, right? So that's a 1-1 one, one that you can give Banding or First Strike. Playing a Bolt on it. Yeah, I got to take care of that. But I'm really afraid that he's going to find a second Hurricane. I mean, two cards in hand. Passing the turn. I mean, this is the second game, and I still haven't dealt a single point of damage to Casey. I mean, this is really good, uh, bad for my self-esteem. I mean, there's a Preacher. Wow, that's a cool card. Probably also coming in from the sideboard. There's an Earthquake for one. Oh, man. This is risky. I mean, how can I? Oh, I cannot win this, can I? Oh, wait, of course, Casey is, of course, on 14 because he also took some damage himself. There's a counter spell here on the Tender Wolves. This is pretty exciting. I'm doing a pretty good job at kind of killing, countering, and killing all the creatures. 
Okay, here's an Earth Elemental. Now he's on 14, okay? So I'm on three, he's on 14. Okay, so let's, let's get this thing going. Attacking him here, so he's gonna drop to 10. Oh, Water Elemental. Remember, Casey's top decking. I thought it was dead for sure, but I'm really coming back here in this match. There's a Tundra Wolves. I mean, should I attack with both? Should I? I mean, the thing is, if I attack with both, he can attack with Tundra Wolves. If he then top decks an AO pile, I'm dead. So I think that's why I'm not doing it. But now I am giving him more time, of course, to find that one Hurricane. Attacking him here. And now the question is for Casey, is he going to take the damage? I mean, if he is, then next turn, I'm definitely going to attack with both. I wonder, yeah, he is taking the damage. He's going to drop to five. So then next turn... Again, Casey needs a Hurricane and I'm done. He's playing with two Hurricanes. Wow, this makes it this makes it interesting as well because this, ooh. Cajun Javelin here. So attacking, I mean, he's got to block the Water Element. He's got five power. He's going to block it here on the Wolves. That makes absolute sense. If he now finds an AO pile, I'm dead or in Hurricane. There's a White Knight, though, in a pass. Oh. Do I have a Counterspell? No, I don't. For a moment there, I thought I had a Counterspell because I was looking at the card. Anyway, attacking it. This is so good for Casey. Maybe I should attack her with both creatures, actually. Because then I put him on one. It's going to put me on two if he finds an Ale Pile. Oh, man, this is so risky. There's a Mox. Okay, this is really good news for me because now I can attack with both. He's got to block the ele the uh, Water Elemental. And there's a Disintegrate and I can kill him. And yes, I can play the Disintegrate on his life total, but I don't want to. I want to kill him with Elemental Power. Oh, this is good. For a moment, Casey, I was super worried that I was just going to lose it again without even dealing damage to you with my Elemental. So I'm super happy to see that I was able uh, to deal some damage to you. That's That's good. Good for my self-esteem. So um, winning game number two here. And that means we're going to go to game number three. Game number three. Here we go. So it's 1-1. One, one, and Casey's on the play. So, I mean, that's really good for him. Taking a mulligan here, it seems. Yep. Putting a card down. Starting with six. And I think it was really kind of a miracle, you know, winning that, that game two. I mean, Casey's deck is just looking really solid. Starting here again with the one drop this time to Tundra Wolves. Starting with my Mana Vault in a pass. Okay, so that's kind of nice. Let's see what Casey can do. He can, of course, attack me here with the Wolves. Oh, Pendlehaven. That's kind of nice. He can pump the Wolves. There's another Wolf. Yep, going to deal two points of damage. Going to drop here to 18. I hope I can kind of find... My Earthquakes here. Earthquake right now for one would be grand, but also a Bolt would be quite nice. After he pumps, of course. Anyway, passing the turn for now. I do have two blue open to counter as well. Ah, oh, there's a Strip though. Man, Strip's annoying. Losing a Volcanic, and I guess I don't have a Bolt or else I would play it out. There's an Ecation Infantry, again an attack. Can unsummon on the card that he pumps, of course, the one that he pumps. So that means I only take one point of damage. I mean, that's something, but it's not why I put the unsummon in there, of course. There's a City of uh, Brass. Four in hand, passing the turn. And I mean, this is what Casey's deck does so well, like early pressure. I mean, we haven't really started the game and already I'm, what, going to draw, okay, counterspell at least on the uh, the new Tundra Wolves, but I'm still taking damage from City of Brass. He's going to attack, he's going to pump, so I'm going to take three more points. I mean, look at my life total. I'm on 13. It, it goes so fast. I guess I'm on 14, according to Casey. That's better, but taking more damage here. There's an Earth Elemental. I mean, hopefully this Earth Elemental can stick. But if Casey now has like a Swords, for example, or worse, if he plays a Preacher, Preacher would be really good right now. 
Gonna tap one. Is this one for swords or just one for a creature? Yep, yeah, there's the swords. At least I'm gonna go up. Gonna go up to 16, but I'm gonna take some serious damage as well. I mean, he can he can pump exactly. He can um, make an assembly worker. Use the pendle havens. This is four. He can deal five points. I'm gonna drop to 11. Wow, take a damage from the Volt, gonna go to 10. I mean, that Mana Volt and City of Brass are just so bad against this deck. There's another Mana Volt. Oh, I'm gonna use it as well. I'm gonna kill myself with my Mana Volts. This is so bad. Where where are my energy fluxes? Where are they? Did I board them out maybe? Because I mean, Casey doesn't really have a lot of artifacts, but still, killing myself here with Mana Volt. Mana Volt is such a good card, but against these aggressive decks, it's so bad. And we have some camera issues on the side of case, so it's hard to see what he does. I guess it's a White Knight and another Tundra Wolves or Ecation Javelin here. Anyway, it's probably a 1-1. Ecation Infantry, perhaps. I think it's a Tundra Wolves. Doesn't really matter. Take two points of damage from my own Mana Vault. Gonna drop to seven. He's just gonna attack me with everything here. He doesn't care that he's gonna lose one creature. I guess I'm even lucky here that he doesn't do that. So I'm gonna tap four to untap one, but I still take a damage from my City of Brass. Ugh. I'm really not liking my own deck right now when I'm looking back at this match. I'm on five. He's, he's so going to kill me. There are even more creatures. There's an Egation Javelin here. I mean, he's not going to... I think he's just doing me a favor by not attacking here. Because I think I'm dead already. Anyway, I'm on four. Three cards in hand. I mean, I have to be honest here, Casey's deck is just, there's just too many creatures, there's too much happening, and he's just passing the turn now, which is, which is nice, Casey, but I think, you know, you already have the match. There is another blue. The only thing that can save me now is an Earthquake, right? I mean, that can kind of get me back into this. I mean, I'm on four, Casey's on 20. What? Taking another point of damage? Why not? Why not playing an Earth Elemental? I mean, when you're dead, then you might as well just play out more Elementals. I mean, it's super hard to see Casey's board now, by the way. I mean, his connection is really bad at the moment, but I'm sure all those blurred cards are just more creatures. And I think the internet's almost gone on the side of Casey, so I apologize for this horrible image. But I think he's gonna he's gonna kill me. Just just do it, Casey. I'm on three. You've got a gazillion creatures. Okay, I think he's using his Ecation Javelin here to put me on two. Yeah, and now he's gonna go for the Alpha Strike. Yeah. I'm 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 so dead. I'm absolutely dead. Look at that. Oh man, counter spell and wheel of fortune. Casey, your deck, it's looking super solid, man. I'm, I'm really impressed by it. Uh, before this match started, I said, I think it's gonna be like 60, 40 in your favor. But now looking at this, I mean, I was super lucky in game two and in all the other games, I mean, wow. Your deck is, is, is looking really, really strong. Anyway, uh, thank you for this match. And also thank you, Casey, for supporting Timmy Talks because he is actually a patron of the show. That's also why we did this match. Um, if you enjoy the channel and if you like uh, the content that I make, please consider becoming a patron as well. And you can do that via patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. So check it out and you can become a sponsor of the show for already $1 a month. And if you like it, you can then also uh, join our Discord. And if you step in at the $2 a month tier, you can also play against me if you want. We can make an episode together like I just did here with Casey. So check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. And talking about that stuff, let's go to the end scroll and take a look at all the amazing, fantastic, wonderful patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks. Here we go.
Peter's thinking to somebody, cause he. 